Dr. Sage here. In today's video, we're going to discuss the methods of physical control of microbes. By the end of this video, you should be able to name six methods of physical control of microorganisms, compare and contrast moist and dry heat methods to control and identify multiple examples of each, define thermal death time and thermal death point and describe their role in proper sterilization, explain four different methods of moist heat control, and explain two methods of dry heat control. You should also be able to identify advantages and disadvantages of cold treatment and desiccation, differentiate between the two types of radiation control methods providing an application of each, outline the process of filtration and describe its two advantages in microbial control, and identify some common uses of osmotic pressure as a control method. Heat is the most widely used method of microbial control. Other methods include radiation, filtration, ultrasonic waves, and cold. With heat, one method is moist heat, for example, hot water, boiling water, or steam. Temperature ranges from 60 degrees Celsius to 135 degrees Celsius. Temperature of steam can be regulated by adjusting its pressure in a closed container. Moist heat operates at lower temperatures and shorter exposure times than dry heat. Most microbicidal effect is coagulation and denaturation of proteins to quickly and permanently halt microbial metabolism. Then we also have dry heat. This is air with low moisture content that has been heated by a flame or electric heating coil. Temperature ranges from 160 degrees Celsius to several thousand degrees Celsius. It dehydrates the cell. The lack of water increases stability of some protein configurations necessitating higher temperatures. At high temperatures, dry heat oxidizes the cells, burning them to ashes. In regards to heat resistance and thermal death, bacterial endospores exhibit the greatest resistance to in disinfection methods. Destruction of spores usually requires temperatures above boiling, and resistance varies between spores. Vegetative cells vary in their sensitivity to heat. Both temperature and length of exposure should be considered for adequate sterilization. Higher temperatures allow shorter exposure times. Lower temperatures requires longer exposure times. Thermal death time is the shortest length of time required to kill all test microbes at a specified temperature. Thermal death point is the lowest temperature required to kill all microbes in a sample in 10 minutes. So for moist heat methods, we can have boiling water, which will allow disinfection. We can also have pasteurization, which is disinfection of beverages. With pasteurization, there's a couple of different methods. The common method is, for example, for milk, it's heated at 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds and then it's bottled and refrigerated. There's also ultra-high temperature pasteurization. Milk is heated to 138 degrees Celsius for two or more seconds. It's then sealed in an airtight container, and then you can store it on the shelf for up to 90 days without refrigeration being needed. We have autoclaves. Okay, this allows steam under pressure, which allows sterilization. Dry heat methods, we have incineration, for example, when you use your bacterial loops to burn off the bacteria that are on the loops. Hot air, temperature and times are greater than with moist heat methods. The effects of cold. Cold treatment merely slows down the activities of most microbes. Some microbes are killed by cold temperatures, but most are not adversely affected by gradual cooling, long-term refrigeration, or deep freezing. Desiccation is dehydration of vegetative cells directly exposed to normal room air. Some delicate pathogens can be killed by desiccation. Some pathogens can be preserved upon desiccation. Desiccation can preserve foods because it reduces the amount of water available to support microbial growth. Lyophilization is a combination of freezing and drying. It's a common method of preserving microbes and other cells in a viable state. Pure cultures are frozen instantaneously and exposed to a vacuum that removes water. We can also use radiation as a microbial control agent. Radiation is energy emitted from atomic activities and disperses at high velocity through matter or space. Radiation suitable for microbial control includes gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet radiation. Irradiation is bombarded of microbes with radiation. Ionizing radiation, known as cold sterilization. Ionizing radiation is used as an effective alternative for sterilizing materials. It's used for materials sensitive to heat or chemicals, and irradiation is one type. Ionizing radiation, this is gamma rays and x-rays. Radiation ejects orbital electrons from an atom, causing ions to form. It causes mutations in DNA and damages proteins. 
non-ionizing radiation, that would be ultraviolet rays, excites atoms, raising them to a higher energy state. It leads to the formation of abnormal bonds within molecules such as DNA. Ultraviolet radiation ranges from 100 nanometers to 400 nanometers. It's most lethal from 240 to 280 nanometers, and it peaks at 260. We use germicidal lamps that it emits ultraviolet radiation at 254 nanometers. Ultraviolet radiation is not as penetrating as ionizing radiation. It passes readily through air, slightly through liquids, and only poorly through solids. The object to be disinfected must be directly exposed to the UV radiation for full effect. The effects of UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation is initially absorbed by DNA. It then forms pyrimidine dimers, which are abnormal linkages between adjacent pyrimidines, thymines, and cytosines. It interferes with normal DNA replication and transcription and leads to inhibition of growth and death. We can also decontaminate by filtration. This is an effective method to remove microbes from air and liquids. Fluid is strained through a filter with openings large enough for a liquid to pass through, but too small for microbes to pass through. Most filters are perforated by precise uniform pores. Coarse filter is 8 microns, ultrafine is 0.02 microns. This allows a selection of the minimum particle size to be trapped. Even smaller pore diameters permit true sterilization by removing viruses and even large proteins. In regards to application of filtration, it can be used in liquids that cannot withstand heat. It's an alternative method for decontaminating milk and beer. It's an important step in water purification. And it's an efficient means of removing airborne contaminants. For example, you might have heard of a HEPA filter before to filter air. Osmotic pressure. Adding large amounts of salt or sugar to foods creates a hypertonic environment. It causes plasmolysis in bacteria. It makes it impossible for bacteria to multiply. Cured meats are treated with high salt concentrations so they can be kept for long periods without refrigeration. And high sugar in jams and jellies has the exact same effect. If you create a high salt or high sugar environment, there's a high amount of solutes outside of the bacteria cells compared to the low amount of solutes inside the bacteria cells. Due to osmosis, what's going to happen is water is going to leave those bacteria cells. They're going to shrivel up and they're going to die from lack of water. This has been your introduction to the methods of physical control of microbes. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.